Hi, I'm Lance Henriksen. You're watching Brian Lomax's Movie Talk. Yesterday, the acting world suffered the loss of one of its greatest character actors in Bill Paxton. This was a man who could bring humour to even the darkest of characters. Uh, I was quite saddened by this loss and I wanted to do something just to celebrate the man, I guess. And I thought rather than a, a top 10 video or a top 5 or anything like that, I'd review one of my favourite films of his. And that film is Near Dark. It is absolutely the antithesis to Twilight. Whereas Twilight just kind of throws a ton of exposition at you for about an hour and a half or so it seems, this film doesn't. It shows rather than tells. We never get big monologues about the rules of, of vampires, about what they can and can't do. We just see it. It just plays out in the film. And the film in many ways kind of just expects you to know the law. And if you don't know it, you'll soon catch up by virtue of what you're seeing on screen. It's directed by Catherine Bigelow, who most film lovers will know as a really great action director. You know, she, she won an Oscar for The Hurt Locker, which is a really great war film, and followed that up with Zero Dark Thirty, another really great war film. Uh, but also Point Break, a classic kind of Keanu Reeves action movie. Uh, and I think she brings that typical Catherine Bigelow almost male mentality to this film. And that probably sounds quite sexist to say that, but she does tend to work in movies that are traditionally directed by men um, and, and does a very good job with them as well. She also writes the script with Eric Redd, who wrote one of my other favourite 80s movies, The Hitcher. And I think if you've seen The Hitcher, if you like the style of that, then you'll see a lot of that here. This feels very much like a modern day Western, in much the same way that Hitcher did. You know, it's not set in the Old West, but it has that feel about it. These people kind of feel like they belong to a different time. As a result, it makes the film feel timeless. Uh, if it wasn't for the score by Tangerine Dream, you probably wouldn't be able to place this from the 80s. I love in this film that we get a reunion of sorts of, of the Aliens cast. We get Lance Henriksen, Bill Paxton, and Jeanette Goldstein, all from Aliens, you know? Uh, they, they were part of that team in Aliens. And yeah, so it seems weird kind of seeing them here on screen all together again, all playing vampires. Weird, but nice. Lance Henriksen is great in the film as the leader of this vampire clan. He's very menacing. Um, and I once met Lance Henriksen, who, who told me about the, the process of making this film and the amount of leeway that Bigelow gave to these actors to go off and come up with their own stories. And there's a line in this film by Henriksen's character in which he says, I thought I fought for the South and the South lost. And that, that comes from this, this backstory that Henriksen himself created of being this, this guy who, who fought in the Civil War and was lying on the battlefield when, when a vampire gave him the option, gave, gave him a, a chance to come back and live as a vampire. Now, none of that is in the film, but that was a backstory that he Henriksen came up with. Um, and like I say, that backstory fed into the dialogue that, that, that gave Bigelow and Red uh, something to work with in their script. Our lead character, Caleb, this, this man who uh, is, is bitten by this, this woman called May and kind of unwittingly brought into this world of vampires, is played by Adrian Pazda. And I would say he's a bit of a weak link in the film, uh, both from, from an acting talent perspective and in the way that he's written. Um, he's not a particularly likeable character. Uh, it's only by the fact that we see his family, his, his father and his sister, that we kind of feel anything for him, I think, personally. Because uh, when we first see him at the start of the film, he's been a bit of a douchebag with his friends. He's, he's not really treating his own friends uh, particularly well. And then he catches, you know, this, this, this girl May in his sights, and he kind of almost goes in for the kill. He basically just wants to... to, to I don't know, get off with this woman, have sex with her, whatever, but his intentions don't feel particularly noble at the start. Um, I mean, as the film goes on, he, he kind of, I guess, shows a bit more of a uh, romantic side. He takes her to see this horse, so he's, a, he's trying a bit harder by that point. But yeah, from the start, he's not that likeable of a character. The father, his father, and his sister 
really humanise him. They give us a reason to want to see him survive, to want to see him get out of this trouble that he's in. Um, so, yeah, those characters are very important to the overall story. But i got to say, it is Paxton in this film that steals the scenes. He is absolutely fantastic in this. He's a force of nature and a complete ball of charisma. Uh, uh, there's a scene in which these vampires go into this bar and they tear the place up, but Paxton has fun doing it. And you, you almost have fun with this guy. It's absolutely horrific in, in one moment, but also quite amusing in the next, just because of the way in which Paxton plays it. If I was to do a list of my top 20 all-time movie villains, I think this guy would be on it. This character, Severin, that he plays, like I say, everything that Paxton brings just makes this guy magnetic. You can't help but have your eyes transfixed on the screen every time he's on there. Near Dark is a fantastic vampire film. It's a fantastic 80s film. It's one of my favourite films from the 80s and I give it four out of five. Now you may ask why not five out of five but like I say I do feel like the music in it kind of dates it a little bit and I do also feel like the, the main character without his family wouldn't really be that engaging, wouldn't be that relatable. It's the vampires. It's that, that group, that family group that really keeps me engaged. What about you? Have you seen this film? And what is your favourite Bill Paxton performance? Comment below, let me know, and until next time, thanks for watching.